going to be the intro video for my guide to competitive programming. Uh, so the first thing that you need to get started is uh, just an environment where you can write code and run it. So I'm going to be using bash and vim. Um, you can use you know, anything really doesn't matter for the text editor. It's nice to have syntax highlighting. Right? You can see that different things are different colors. Um, helps you see if you made a mistake. Um, and also auto indent. Right, so this is automatically goes to the right spot in the next line. So those are the two features I would look for, but really anything is fine. Um, running the code, we're going to use uh, just the command line. So this is the C++ compiler. So I can compile my code. It makes uh, this a.out file, which is an executable. And then I can run that executable. Uh, and it will do something. So uh, Right, compile it, and means, and then do another command, and then run it uh, with this input file. So I'll explain all that more later. Let's take a look at this code for now. Um, so this solves a very simple problem. Uh, just take two integers and output their sum. Um, so it's nice to just see, uh, you know, get get a template idea of what, you know, a framework for what we can do. Right, so you can reuse this framework for pretty much all problems. Um, so the first thing is that we uh, include IO stream. So um, this is maybe the most important line. Include is how uh, C++ deals with libraries. Um, so IO stream is the standard library for input and output, um, which obviously we will need for every, pretty much every problem. Uh, right, this is just the format of, of programming problems: is you, you know, read in something and then you output some answer. Uh, and IOStream does that for us. So IOStream gives us studcn, which reads some standard input, uh, which will typically be a file, right? some you know, test cases. Uh, studair, or cair, which um, is not strictly necessary. It just lets us write debugging information. Um, and then cout, which writes the standard out. And so that's where we should. That's how we can actually print the output um, requested by the problem. All right. So in this example, uh, declare 264-bit integers a and b, read them in. Um, this is the read-in operator that C++ decided to use. Uh, right. Add them together and then write them out. And you know, we added in some debugging. You know, just in case we need it. Of course, this problem is, is simple, so we probably don't need to debug anything. Um, so that's what's going on with this problem. Uh, let's clean up this code a little bit. There's a, some ways to, to make it a little shorter and simpler. Um, so the first thing is we're going to do using namespace as std. So notice all of these instances of std colon colon in the code. That's because the way that the standard library is written in C++, uh, they put all the names in the standard library into this namespace std, uh, so that you could tell what was from the standard library and what wasn't. But um, we're just going to uh, not you. Right, we, if you do this, that brings all of the names from the namespace std into like the global namespace, so that you don't need this prefix. And that will save us a bunch of typing, so we're going to do that. Um, right, and you can see, even in this very simple program, there's like five instances that we got to remove. Um, the other thing we're going to do is uh, just an abbreviation for 64-bit integers. Uh, it's shorter to type. Um, this is also, sometimes I do long, long. These should be the same. It's a little clearer to do 64-bit in 64T. But anyway, um, all right, so this will be our integer type. Uh, a nice thing about this is we can easily change it if we want to, right? So now all of the you know LLs will be changed to 32-bit, uh, although we'll hardly ever want to do that. 64-bit um, is pretty much always uh, the best thing to do. Um, there's also a uh, 128-bit type in I think at least G++ that you could use um, sometimes, uh, but mostly we'll use 64-bit integers, right? These uh, something like 9 times 10 to the 18. Uh, so 10 to the 18. You can also write, this means 9 times 10 to the 18. It's about the range. Um, 
plus or minus that. Uh, so yeah, that's what you'll want to use for most um, for most problems. 32-bit uh, will often overflow, and 128-bit is slow. It's not natively supported by the hardware. Um, so what else should we say here? Uh, yeah, I recommend using Sierra for debugging. Uh, one nice thing, advantage of that is that uh, you can easily comment it out once you're done, right? And you have the right answer. And so now, if you rerun, you know, we don't get the debug output; we just get the correct answer, which is nice. Um, there is. Uh, I'm mostly going to be showing C++, so like I'm not. There's an older C library. Studio, which also does input output, but I'm not going to use that um, doing these guides. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about actually. So this is basically all that we need to know about the code, um, and this is a nice template to follow. Like we'll pretty much always have these three lines at the top of every program we write, um, and then we'll define a main function. Right, main is where your program starts executing. We'll read in some input, and then we'll write out some output. You know, and in the middle, <laughs> this is where the, the actual problem solving happens. Um, so, you know, now that we've explained how to deal with all this sort of boilerplate, uh, in future videos we can focus more on how to solve the problems. Um, so let's talk a little bit about actually running the program. So, uh, G plus plus is the um, the main C plus plus compiler. Uh, there's also Clang these days, which is a competitor. They're both fine. Um, we are going uh, to use it with some options. So I've created an alias for this. Uh, so this says to use C17, which is um, the most recent release. They've added you know, a bunch of cool features over the years. Uh, I think if you don't run it with this option, it I'm not sure what it uses, but it it doesn't have, I think, even the C11 features. Every three years, they release a new version. Um, O3 means like try and make the code as fast as possible. Uh, so the compiler will do some optimizations to, um, to make it faster when it runs. And then uh, give us a bunch of errors. Um, so the compiler will give us warnings about uh, things that we did that are like technically allowed, but they look very fishy. Um, we want to. Uh, try and write good code that doesn't have anything that looks fishy in it. Um, so, uh, so I've defined this to an alias, so I can actually just run gxx my code, and it will, you know, run this with all these flags. Right, that's the same as doing this, but obviously it's shorter to type, uh, and that produces this a.out program. If we wanted, we could do dash o flag, and then it would produce this a plus b program. Anyway, uh, a.out is, is fine. So then you can run a.out. Uh, so if you run it just like this with nothing else, then it um, takes input from the terminal and writes to the terminal. So you know I typed in the 5 and the 8, 5, 9, and it outputs 13 or 14. Um, if you wanted to take input from a file, which is usually a good idea, because typing in these long test cases by hand is uh, takes a while. So I've created a file, uh, which just has, you know, that's that's within the file. Right? That's what cat does, is it tells us it's in the file. Um, just 3 and 5. And so if we take the input from a file, then I don't, it doesn't wait for me to type anything in, because it, it's just looking in here. Uh, and it just outputs 8. Right? So this is the same as this. It's just that um, I didn't have to type in 3 and 5, because it was already in this, this file. We can also, so this is called input redirection. Um, this replaces standard in uh, instead of being on the terminal. It replaces it with the file. There's also output redirection. So this means instead of writing to the terminal, write to some out file, which you might want to use if you want the output in a file so that you can you know, examine it um, better in some way. Uh, you can also redirect debugging output. So let me turn the debugging back on. And now we need to be compiled because we changed the code, right? The old a dot out uh, still doesn't have the debugging, but after we compile, it does. Uh, but we can redirect that to a 
file. So two arrow out means send C, uh, standard error to this file. And now when we run it, you can see there's nothing on the terminal, but there is something in this file. Um, yeah, so that's the important things to know about running stuff, is actually how to compile um, all of these flags that are useful, uh, and import redirection and output redirection. Um, so that's really all you need to get started. Uh, and in the next video, we'll actually solve some problems.